Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. This is going to be a really short guide for making some liquid effects in Motion 5. There is a link in the description to go and watch the Motion Love tutorial. Uh, all I'm doing here is applying what I learned at the Motion Love tutorial to image brushes and ink brushes in Motion 5. Um, so to really follow along well you should go and watch that tutorial first. At that tutorial you will learn how to set up uh, the combination of levels and Gaussian blur filters to get this kind of interaction between objects in a group. And uh, so it's a specific combination of filters with the right settings and when they act on a group then this starts to happen. Um, and at the Motion Love tutorial you will learn those steps. The language is Russian. The steps though are really easy to follow along regardless of the language. I, I was able to pick it up really easily just from watching and the Motion Love channel generally is full with it's just a really amazing stuff that you can do with motion kind of like um, Simon Abstool's channel and the Let's Motion channel as well. Alright, so let's move on. What I want to do is just show you some different ways to apply uh, these filters to get some liquidy results. So let's start with... Uh, right, we're going to start with the Ink Dilate 01 brush. So I'm going to add uh, a circle to this group. Give it a width. I want to make the initial width a bit thin, about 35. Right, and make sure the fill is off. So we're going to come into shape style. I'm just going to choose liquid ink dilate 01. So this is an image brush that will draw on and erase off the path. If I turn off the filters then you'll see what it looks like normally. It's an uh, image brush that's playing this uh, small ink mob file over and over again. I'm not completely sure how image brushes work in Motion 5. So when we apply the filters it kind of liquefies and um, just before I was Watching the Motion Love tutorial, I was playing around with this brush and then I just put one and one together as I was watching it. And I came back into Motion to see what would happen if we put these filters on this brush. And yeah, sure enough, we get quite a cool liquid effect. So then uh, from here, and I think it'll be pretty clear, I really don't know um, what I'm doing. I'm still just playing around. So if we come into the advanced section you'll see dynamics are on and dynamics is something that gives emitter qualities to uh, a path if it's an image brush or airbrush so if we increase the speed here and I'm going to drag out these keyframes to make the write on behavior last longer so increasing the speed gives us some interesting results drop the speed down again to compare. So increasing the speed is going to break it up. Let's also add a little bit of spin, increase the speed, uh, emission range of these do things as well. Just play around with things, see if we can get something different. Increase the speed to over 100. Okay, so things start to happen. Let's undo that, get it back to how it was, and I'm going to add to the circle uh, particles behavior scale over life. So I'm going to make the scale at birth choose here from this menu birth and death values. I'm going to choose the scale at birth as uh, 300 and scale at death at 10. And 
in playing around with these settings you can get kind of a tapered blob going on. Uh, I can change the colors in the shape stroke section uh, but I'm just going to do it quickly by adding stylize filter fill and if if I come into properties, I was looking at uh, into shape the shape properties. I was looking at um, keyframing the width of the stroke over time. So if I made that a hundred, set a keyframe or a ramp behavior, and then at the end of the path have that hit zero, it's going to drop to three there. So this way we kind of get like a big blob that will move along the path and then peter out. So those are some things you can do with the ink uh, dilate ink bleed 03 brush I think it is. Let's have a look at using the ink bleed heavy brush. I'm just going to take my Bezier tool and add one point to the group. I'll select it, come into properties. I'm going to increase the width a lot, but you won't see anything because it's just a point. But I'm going to add the liquid ink bleed 01 heavy now, and now we can see it coming coming in. So without the filters, this is the ink bleed. Heavy01. I use it a lot for various things. So of course the filters are going to liquefy it and this is the best way to get an emitter going that I found so far. A nice quick emitter so um, I'm going to grab that Bezier blob there and hit E. I'll just drop the scale down and increase scale randomness, uh, crank up the speed, speed randomness, spin, just playing around doing different things. Okay and then let's now have a look at um, another ink brush which is pretty cool. Right, the ink bleed 03. This time I'm just going to draw in a Bezier curve. I'll select it and I'll come and give it a width. But I'm going to change the shape style to liquid 03 drops. So it's a, it's a write-on brush, it's drawing on. We get these cool uh, rainbow colors which are coming from the, the default brush color pattern for that particular brush. Again, come into uh, dynamics and we can play around with the speed. Kind of like a lava lamp effect happening. And for this one, I'll come into behaviors and add uh, simulations. Vortex does some cool stuff. I'm just going to add random motion. Crank it up, affect some orders. I think that's what you do. All right, so just using a busier path. Uh, and this brush you can get some interesting things happening. Right then, now let's just look at a simple shape. Here's a circle, I'll give it uh, a width and no brushes here I'm just going to set it from brush type solid to airbrush and I'm going to come into advanced 
turn on the dynamics, reveal the panel by clicking show up here and uh, all I'm going to do is crank up the speed and hit play. Let's turn that speed down a little, go to 45. Emission angle, if I turn up the emission angle, emission range. So play around with all of these things to get something uh, different happening. And then, um, yeah, I mean, if you duplicate uh, shapes and then, say, offset them in the... Timeline, you get more interesting effects. Add spin, add rotation, all of those kinds of things. Um, right, yes, yeah, so as I said, I don't really know uh, what I'm doing. I'm just tinkering around and experimenting and just sharing with you the best things that I've found so far. Uh, so let's finish up by having a look at this title animation. So uh, I just have the filters acting on this uh, group and the letters are all just Bezier paths with a write-on behavior added on. And they're writing on and they're keyframed to, I'll just turn off the second group for now, they're keyframed to animate into position along the X axis from around here. So they're moving along the x-axis and the write-on behavior is drawing on the shapes to make the letters. And that group uh, finishes at five seconds and then the second group will take over from there. The second group's time to start at um, the five second mark. So the second group is just uh, duplicate with the write-ons turned off and the Dynamics turned on with the speed cranked up, so they all start to uh, explode away with ink. And that's the overall effect that we get. Okay, so that's that. Thanks for checking this out. I hope that this was useful. Um, do go and watch the Motion Love tutorial and you'll learn uh, how to set up the filters to get the inky effect and some other really cool stuff as well. Thanks for watching.